What you see here is a plain JavaFX application. It has no dependencies and all it does is display a table view. And uh, whenever you click this Add Customer button, a new customer object is created and inserted into the table. Now, what I want to show you today is how you can use TornadoFX in a plain Java application. And uh, uh, we will use the wizard component from TornadoFX to create uh, a more uh, user-friendly way of adding customers. First, let's, let's have a quick look at what we have. So this customer list that you saw is uh, the root of this application. So this is uh, the application uh, uh, class, which just sets a scene to this uh, customer list uh, as the root object. The customer list is uh, a border pane, and on top it has a header with this button, and in the center it has the table. And uh, let's have a look at the button. The add customer button calls create customer. And what create customer does now is simply create a new customer object, setting a name in the street and then adding it. So this uh, is of, co of course no good. So we would like to introduce a wizard that will ask uh, the user for uh, customer information before creating the new customer object. The first thing we have to do is add tornado effects to our project. So since I'm using uh, Maven here, let's uh, create a dependencies block and a new dependency on tornado effects and uh, we actually need version 174 snapshot so the the java interoperability that i'm about to show you has not been released yet um, uh, but it will be shortly this is all we need to do to enable tornado effects in our project next up we of course want to change this so we need to create a wizard and two wizard pages and uh, I've already um, prepared some uh, FXML for the two wizard pages. And it's pretty simple. Let's have a look at it. So the name page is supposed to be the first page. And it has a label and a text field in the grid pane. So it simply asks for the name. And uh, the text field has an FX ID of name. And uh, the address page is actually quite similar. It's the same thing, but it asks for a street. So I've kept this very minimal uh, for this uh, this uh, demo. Of course, uh, you wouldn't uh, create a wizard and uh, have two pages to ask for two, uh, two values, but uh, it will get the point across and keep things simple. So we need to create uh, the components, the, the views for these two um, FXML files. So let's do that. We will start by creating the name page. And this name page will extend view. And this is a, a normal tornado effects view, but you can actually use it from Java now. And uh, it says we need to implement a method. And the method we need to implement is get root. Get root is supposed to return the root node of this view. And uh, we would like this uh, root node to be a grid pane. We'll call it root. And we want it to be loaded from FXML. And uh, that's actually all we need to do to make sure that uh, uh, the name page FXML is loaded into this node right here. So uh, the next thing we need to do is to create a constructor. And uh, in the constructor, we need to call super. And uh, we will use the, the constructor, the super constructor that um, takes a title. And we'll just call this page name. Uh, now we need access to the text field inside the name page. And uh, we can use the, the normal FXML annotation for that and access the text field name. Now we want to uh, have a, a customer object that's shared between the wizard and the two pages. So uh, before I set up the sharing, I'm just going to create a, a customer here like this. So we can continue and bind the name property of this customer to our name text field. So the text property of the text field will be bound bidirectionally to the customer name property. Now, as I told you, we need to share this customer object between the, the wizard pages and the wizard itself. So let's first create the wizard. We'll call it customer wizard. 
And this customer wizard will extend the wizard class from tornado effects. Uh, and uh, it will actually have the customer that we want to share between all of these pages. Now there are other ways to deal with this. You could use a view model and inject it into the different uh, uh, pages, but I'm going to keep it as simple as possible for this demo. So uh, let's create a constructor in here as well. And uh, we also need to call super. And uh, here we want to, to override the uh, or call the constructor that takes both a title and a heading because that will be used in the wizard. So let's call it create customer and uh, supply customer information. Now remember we wanted to to share this customer object up here. We want to share with the other pages. And uh, there are multiple ways of doing that, but uh, right now I'm just going to create a map of arguments and pass it to those other pages. So uh, this map I will call args. And uh, since I now have Kotlin on, on the class path, I'm not going to write Kotlin code, but I'm going to use the map of function from Kotlin. You could, you could create a, a normal hash map if you feel more comfortable with that. So what we do is call map of and uh, create a new pair. And this pair, actually we don't need any type parameters. We'll have the name of customer and the value of the customer object. Now we can use that when we add wizard pages. We want to add to this, but we need to find the uh, name page we created and pass it the arguments. When we do that, the name page can access this argument. So let's go into the name page again. Now change this, uh, this uh, declaration to look it up in the params instead. So we'll access the customer object like this. Now this is not type safe. We, we use this key. Uh, and uh, you might not like to, to use this strategy, but I'm doing what's uh, um, you know, easy to understand if you don't, uh, if you never saw tornado effects before. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep it simple like this. Now we have access to the same customer object that was created in the wizard in the name page. And uh, the uh, address page will be almost identical to the name page actually. So let's just make a copy of it, address page. And uh, what we change is uh, the title and uh, which property we bind against. The next thing we need to do now is to change this uh, customer list function that just created the customer object. And instead we want to create a wizard. So let's instantiate a wizard. We will use the find function from tornado effects to create an instance of this wizard. What's nice about using this is that uh, it will uh, create a new scope for the wizard and all the wizard pages. Since we're not in a view or any kind of uh, tornado effects component where you have find available right here, you see we're in a border pane, you have to access the, the static FX find. But of course you can add a static import for it to make it look nicer. So now we have the wizard and uh, we want to configure the outcome whenever the wizard is completed. We want to do basically this that we did before, right? So we will say wizard on complete. And uh, whenever we're complete, we want to do this, but we want to access the, the customer from the wizard. And so we need some way of accessing this, uh, this customer. So let's go back into the customer wizard. We could either make this public or we could add uh, an accessor for it, a getter. So I'm going to just make it um, make it public now and change this into wizard.customer. And uh, after we've found the wizard, we've configured what's going to happen when it's complete, we need to open it in a modal window. So this should be it. Before we run this application, we need to register our uh, plain JavaFX application with the Tornado FX runtime. And uh, it turns out that's really simple. So let's go into our app class. We just need one simple statement in here. And, um, and uh, that is fx.registerapplication. 
And uh, this is the application we want to register and the primary stage of that application is this. Now we should be able to run. Um, let's try it out. So our uh, view looks exactly the same when we click the add customer button, we get our wizard. And uh, I, I see I forgot to add the, the second page. Um, so let's do that real quick. Go back into the wizard and uh, add the address page as well. Rerun again. Add customer failed. So we did something wrong inside of address page. Let's see, what did we do? So of course we wanted to access the street property. Because if we have a look at the address uh, page FXML, it only has a street property, it doesn't have a name property. That's what you get for copying code, I guess. Let's try again. This time it works. We have both our steps. And uh, let's enter a name. Go to the next page, enter a street, and finish. And it worked. Of course, I could go out on now to customize this wizard. Let's say, for example, by adding uh, enable step links. Set enable step links to true. And uh, this will uh, give me the opportunity to, to navigate between the wizard steps just by using uh, the links here. There are multiple other options as well. They're well documented in the Tornado FX guide and everything should apply for a plain JavaFX application as well. So this tutorial shows you how you use the wizard from Tornado FX, but it also shows you how you can create Tornado FX uh, views inside your plain JavaFX applications. And uh, when you're ready to take the next step, you can actually just uh, take any class, let's say this one, for example, and convert to Kotlin. Let's see. And you can start to utilize um, the, 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 the more powerful features of Tornado FX one view at a time. So this root will now, of course, look a little bit different. So it's a grid pane by FXML and so on. I'm not going to change the rest of the view here, but the, you can migrate uh, one piece of your application to Kotlin at a time. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, this short screencast. And uh, uh, if, if you try it out and you hit any roll bumps, there might be more we can do for the Java interop. Please uh, create issues at uh, GitHub if you find any rough edges. Thanks for watching.